when I first moved here, I lived like right around the corner, and I was looking all over for the Indian Center. First, I was told it was on uh, Parsons, and I couldn't find it. I drove up and down one day, couldn't find it. And I was told it was on High Street, and then I couldn't find it. And then one day, going home, I turned like and came down the street, and I said, "That's NATO." <laughs> And I stopped right away and I came in and it was the Indian Center. I was like, "Is what is this the Indian Center? And uh, a lady that was sitting downstairs was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, good. And um, that's when I started meeting everybody. I've met some really good people here that have really helped me a lot with my move and the transition and uh, keeping me kind of on a good path. When I first moved here, I was kind of panicked and kind of like freaked out because I had grown up with, um, on like a small reservation, you know, and I had lived in Minneapolis for a few years, but I had like traveled back and forth to Minneapolis. It's not that I never left the reservation, you know, I was traveling back and forth and I was so used to being around certain, you know, kind of people and at first I felt like really lost and, um. Now I'm starting to feel like a little bit more grounded, like I have roots, you know. Um, the center is really helping me with that. I think it's and it's not just the center, it's the people that are in the center that I've met and um, developed some really strong friendships with that I really care. It's kind of taken, so there's some people I think that's kind of taken me and my kids like under their wing and are like helping us. Well, I think it's important that we have a place for the people to come together because when they um, when they live off the reservation, it's hard to go and live in a city where there's where there's no reservation, there's no Indian people, and there's no ceremonies, and uh, there's a lot of diversity, and it's really hard for the Indian people to feel comfortable in this society. So, I think that. <clears throat> when we make a place for them that uh, the fellowship is good because there's no reservations here. And uh, therefore there's there's not a lot of elders to uh, learn from. And uh, as long as we keep it communal and keep the fellowship going within the community, um, we find harmony living in the city. And our mission actually is to um, continue to keep all the Native Americans connected and um, we like to have spiritual and ceremonial events to nourish them um, because we don't have any reservations here. Um, so we hold a lot of cultural events here, powwows, um, we have um, birthday parties and baby showers and just different ceremonies to um, help the people stay connected to each other and to uh, have fellowship with other Native Americans so that they feel uh, more comfortable in the city here. We have day-to-day drop-in operations and uh, the people just come here to hang out, socialize and visit each other and talk about things from the reservation. Honestly, I think that it's important that um, the people, the Indian people know that we're here so that they can find the resources that Columbus has to offer them. Welcome to the Native American Indian Center of Central Ohio. This afternoon we are putting on our Strengthening Families program we call Sage and Cedar. and. We are in the middle of preparing, so I've been running around all afternoon, making sure everything's ready. And we have a lot of things going on. Tomorrow we have the Columbus Culture Festival that we're I'm attending, and I'm going to have a NACO boot information booth for it. And uh, next week we have all kinds of programs running on also. Moving to Ohio was really scary for me. It was different. Um, before Ohio, I lived in uh, Minneapolis for about two years, three years, and before that I lived in um, Belcourt, North Dakota. And that's where um, 
or reservation is I am half Ojibwa and half German. Um, my father's full blooded Anishinaabe from the Turtle Mountains. And I grew up with my grandparents and lived most of my life with my grandparents and my uncles and stuff, my aunts, in North Dakota. And um, I moved to Minnesota to form a relationship with my father, a stronger bond with my parents, my father, and my mother. I'm in the parenting program here. We have a parenting class that's um, one night a week, and we eat before the class, and then we um, talk about parenting things. And it's geared towards kind of uh, smaller kids. I have teenagers, and I was like, well, I'll just go, you know, I probably won't, you know, be helpful. But it has been very helpful. Um, me and my boys are trying some of the things that we're doing in the parenting classes at home, and it's working, you know, a little bit here and there. It's a good program. It's called Sage and Cedar, and uh, I really like it. I'm in the um, the Stop Smoking program here. I'm a patch on right now. <laughs> with smoking. <laughs> I mean, I'm really. I was smoking like two packs of cigarettes a day, and um, I'm doing really good with my cigarette, my tobacco consumption now. And I'm starting to realize, you know, that um, tobacco is sacred to um, Native people and to my people, you know, and we use it to pray. And every time I smoke a cigarette, I'm kind of thinking that, you know, I should be praying or I'm abusing this gift that was given to us. So this um, Tobacco is Sacred kind of program is really good. It's here too. Um, I do volunteer work here. I help with the food bank and I see a lot of people in this community they come in here that are struggling, that need food or need some kind of help in the centers there for them. And it doesn't matter if you're Native American or white or black or what you are. When you come in that door and if you need a food box, you get helped. And they're really respectful to people that come in and need help. You don't feel um, belittled when you come in. Sometimes it's really hard for people to ask for help. In the center, it's easy to ask for help here. I never like considered myself an artist I just like to draw and um when I started to get to know people a little bit better I started letting you know I started showing them some of my drawings and there's this guy here that was looking at him one day and he got me and Carol mentioned it Carol first Carol had brought it up to me that there was an art exhibit for Native American women at this place called Fort Hayes here and she said that, you know, it would be, you know, good for me to get into it. It's one of our primary focuses is to bring recovery. We stress sobriety. And in the evenings after the power is over, when people would typically go out and get drunk, we try to have activities. Mm -hmm. We have programming here that is um, more specific. We have a white bison program which is a recovery program and it's kind of suitable for recovery from anything not just drugs and alcohol but um, we have a lot of folks who have had um, codependency issues or um, you know there's all kinds of things you can recover from or just personal development it's it's an excellent program and was designed by a fellow named um, Don Coyhus out of Colorado and it's based on Native American spirituality and the 12 steps. So it's, it's, it's very well done and it's very successful. A lot of it is, is based upon the Paramatakawasi, which means we are all related. And it's not just humans that we're related, but everything that God has created. And we're related because God made all everything us and the animals and the plants and everything and um, what that means to be related is that you take care of and assume some responsibility for your relatives. In our recovery programming, white bison is, um, it's that wheel, it's that medicine wheel, which also kind of symbolizes the, that prayer, Matakawasi and that we're kind of all one and connected. Um, and there's phases in there of growth and development. 
and White Bison takes each phase and teaches us kind of what normal development is and what happens when you haven't achieved that level of development because of neglect or abuse or you know the trauma that has happened in your life and that it's not just personal development but development of a culture and a people also and what happens to that culture and those people when that normal cycle of development is interrupted and what you need to learn to go back and fix those pieces because it's never too late. My role, um, my title is uh, Legacy Project Coordinator uh, and Legacy Project Coordinator for NACO and we have a grant that is funded by the Legacy Foundation and uh, they've given us money to run this uh, NACO Sage and Cedar program. It's a um, culturally specific curriculum that works with young kids and their parents. We teach them uh, what would gener generally be referred to as life skills, and um, they, which involves problem solving, have better communication with their kids, with, with their parents, and um, we teach them how to have better relationships with their peers, how to stay out of trouble, and some kind of good all around just kind of um, strategies to go about life that really hopefully will be helpful and that are somewhat culturally specific and um, and also to give them a meal together and give them kind of a family eating together that they can look forward to. So it's a really positive program. We've had a good turnout and we're on our seventh, no, we're on our eighth week. So come introduce yourself to the camera. This is one of our good uh, Sage and Cedar participants. I run the kids section and the other lady runs the uh, parent section. And Derek, uh, Derek is in our kids section. You want to tell them about the program? Well, it's a great program. They're, every week they're talking about communication skills and how to ignore something when you don't want to do it. And you got a whole bunch of pressure on your back. And you just take it off. And sometimes you can express your feelings to people that you really think that you could trust. Yeah. And so we want to, you know, create that sense of trust in community and family and uh, build uh, relationships with the kids and uh, make them come down here more often and feel like they're part of NACO. Hopefully Sage and Cedar does that. Because Sage and Cedar, Sage and Cedar are both uh, sacred plants to um, a lot of Native American tribes and families are sacred also so we're trying to kind of reintroduce that element of parenting and um, let the parents know how special it is and what a great opportunity it is to be a parent and to teach a child and teach them how to live in this world which isn't always that easy. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of influences these days and we try and you know give kids the tools to work their way through them. Hello, uh, my name is Rick Collins. I work here at the Native American Indian Center. I volunteer and this is my garden. And the garden was created so that the public can have a nice place to come and see a bunch of the plants that we used to grow a long time ago. A lot of plants that are beneficial to our people. As you can see behind me, this is our three sisters garden. Uh, we have we plant corn beans and squash all together We let the corn grow about this high and then we plant our beans and our beans grow up the corn With the corn and the beans they help protect the squash they shade it and then that's why we call it our three sisters garden and Also when we cook our soups a lot of times we'd have corn beans and squash in our soup uh, the sunflower hut that you see behind me was created for uh, the children to have a nice place to play. They could play underneath it. The sunflowers get wrapped across the top of the little hut here and we have flowers that can grow on it and uh, later we'll plant some peas because we can grow them a few more times this season. We'll plant some peas that will grow across the bottom and they'll wrap up on all the uh, netting that's on there and then they can come in and help us harvest them. 
Okay, the mural that you see was created by Jerry Hobson. Uh, he's a friend of mine who's Navajo. And the mountain that's in the middle is what he could see from his home. And he never did anything on a scale this big before and uh, got the chance to do it and did a fantastic job. All right, well, I'm going to try my own way to explain to you about grass dancing. Hundreds of years ago, our people, the affiliated tribes, they would come together and they would have gatherings. Not like a family gathering, but as today, as we have come to know, it's called a powwow. <laughs> The Native American Indian Center of Central Ohio was founded in 1975 by Selma Walker. Also, her Indian name is Chattikawi, which is left-handed woman. And she was, she, she was from the Sisseton Wampanoag Sioux Tribe of South Dakota. And in 1975, she retired to Columbus with her husband. And she was um, she got a job to it was to find Native American Indians employment and it was just her and she didn't have an office she didn't have a phone it was just you know here's your mission to go find Indians jobs families and what she found was that a lot of the folks that um, were Native American in Columbus had never really managed to assimilate or fit into the system and a lot of kids were um, real needy um, with just real basic things like shoes and clothes and stuff and she used to put, fill her car up with donations and of food and clothes and try and help some of these families just meet their basic needs because you know a lot of them just weren't work ready they didn't have driver's license and they didn't have just all the real basic things and so she tried to meet their real basic needs and um, she used to just drive from family to family and it just got to be too much and so they decided to open up a central office where families could come to them for assistance. And it, it, they, they did it by digging worms. They raised money to open the first office. Um, the community did by digging worms. So it was a pretty amazing. So they were able to have a, a place where they could come together and uh, when they needed to. And, you know, get with um, some of the, the food and clothes and stuff. But after a few years um, of meeting people's basic needs, it became evident that more was needed. And uh, my mom decided to have a powwow so that people could relearn some of their cultural, uh, the beauty of being Indian rather than just, you know, meeting the basic needs of people every day but have a celebration, a celebration of the Indian. So in the early 80s, in 1982 or 83, we had our first powwow here in Columbus. People ask me, you know, why, you know, why do you do this? And I tell them because I grew up I hate to say this, but I grew up, and the only Indian people I knew were alcoholic. 
I can was a kid walking along the streets of the little town on a reservation where my mom was from. It's called Wagner. And there would be Indians laying on the sidewalks, and you'd have to step over their feet, you know, because they were like inebriated, you know. And when I was a teenager here in Columbus, you know, I hung out with, you know, Native American folks, but they were, you know, it was in bars, and I didn't drink because I couldn't. I just, I just, I just couldn't do it. But. All, all my friends, everybody I knew, drank. And it was just, just so destructive. And I, I saw, you know, women with children and you know, their homes and their families be destroyed because of the alcoholism. And I wanted my son, I had one biological child, and I wanted my son to know something different, to have something different. I wanted him to be proud of who he was because I, I wasn't when I grew up. And I just wanted him to feel good about who he was. And that's been my motivation to um, educate people. And my, my son grew up feeling very good about who he was. He started dancing and singing when he was, when he could, as soon as he could walk. He's been my motivation. I just wanted things to be different for him. Now I have five kids at home. And um, they're all assumed, <laughs> and I love them all, and they continue, all of them continue to motivate me to make change as, in any way I can. How about a big round of applause for all our dancers? Thank you very much.